hypothetical, more or less sober interview of Elon Musk by David Blue. It's 2.41 on a Monday morning. Welcome. Elon Musk. Yes. Can I be frank with you? I suppose. You suppose. That's a funny word to choose because not so long ago, supposition as to whether or not you would buy Twitter incorporated occupied the attention of the major technology media for weeks recently. Just the supposition. And then the supposition as to the consequences of your supposed decision to buy Twitter Incorporated. Um, the truth as to whether or not you own Twitter Incorporated are as of today, June 6th, 2022, uh, not the day uh, that will live in infamy because that's Pearl Harbor, but it's the day, it, it's D-Day, it is today. Um, wow, suppose. Well, I'm gonna be frank with you, Elon Musk. Have you ever heard the term Musk Melon? I, I can't say I have. Well, it's, uh, it's a term for where, from where I come from that would be the center of the United States. Have you ever used the term flyover country, Elon Musk? Uh, yeah, I probably have. Well, you're a son of a bitch, Elon Musk. <laughs> um, I could get out look where I am, interviewing the most, the wealthiest man in the world. I can't say that I speak for the working class of the breadbasket of the United States, but I can't even come close. But if I may speak for them, I'd say that just about everything and, 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 and about you and everything about the decisions that you've made, the professional decisions, and I'm not talking about the personal decisions, I don't give a shit about that. The professional decisions that you've made in public and the consequences upon the citizens of, well, the world. I was gonna say the Western world, but Jesus, the world, it's all offensive and or completely incomprehensible. Elon Musk. <laughs> Yes. What in the goddamn fuck are we gonna do with all the batteries? What in the fuck are we gonna do with all the batteries? Well, I uh, actually have been developing research into yada yada yada, uh, safe ways of disposing batteries. I'm talking about one ton, one and a half ton groups of battery cells, power cells, made of almost inevitably, and I know there are rumors of something cast iron and something, uh, recyclable batteries, but it, it, name me a battery technology that is currently in your, t in your products that is recyclable. Actually don't, because I'm gonna continue. Uh, there is no even remotely ecologically responsible way of disposing of any of the current battery technologies that we've developed uh, so long as battery technology has existed. Um, I'm sure there would be a rebuttal here, wouldn't there? I don't have it though. Smart man, of course. Elon Musk, I want to tell you uh, assuming with you wouldn't have walked, I don't think you'd walk into the room actually, but assuming this wouldn't be have been cut, I want to say that I remember when you were the guy putting electric motors in Lotus Elises in what, the early 2000s? God, I thought that was a good idea. It was, 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 was a good idea. And maybe it's untoward of me, maybe it's completely not my position to say, but motherfucker, you should have stayed there. That was where, that was your element. You're a smart guy. You're a uh, interesting, intriguing, um, I would say automotive mogul. That's, and that's a great place to be. And you could have stayed there forever and made a shitload of money and made more money than you could have ever spent in your life. Acc accrued more, not as much, not even remotely as much power as you have right now, but like more power than you would have ever thought to do, to deal with. And you could have continued to speculate your word that you began with upon humanity's future in, in space, which is a ridiculous thing to spend any time on when nearly 40 million, if not 40 million adults in the United States cannot read or write uh, in day-to-day in -day life. In a way, like, they struggle with, uh, it's an obstacle in day-to-day -day life, reading and writing. It's ridiculous of you to send one of your automobiles into space with a, uh, Inflatable man in the past in the in the driver's seat is a fucking joke. It's offensive to humanity. I'm speaking for humanity now. Wow, boy, have I gone out of scope. Um, one other thing, 
you remind me of my brother-in-law, Mitch. It, it, like, it's a, kind of uncanny, but I want to say, to the credit of my brother-in-law, child of a second, he's second generation immigrant from Japan, I think I'm using that term right, in that his parents immigrated from Japan. Uh, one of nine children, working class household, St. Louis, Missouri, something I will never understand. Okay, an upbringing I will never understand. Made of himself, um, I'm not gonna suppose who this thing, I'm simply gonna say what he did. He went to medical school and became, for a, a gajillion years, to become a radiologist, and now he's the head of a radiology department at a local hospital. Um, in 2012, Edward Lowe, Motor Trend Editor-in-Chief, made the ridiculous, not ridiculous, I'm sorry, rescind that, not ridiculous, made the substantial decision of course, not alone, but um, to name the Tesla Model S, the car of the year, 2012. I remember that clearly. Probably so. I'm surprised that I haven't actually kept and framed the issue, except it would just bother me. Um, I remember that I was 18 years old. It was when I graduated from high school. Uh, I remember thinking, what an, like, what a, this was a huge thing. Because Motor Trend's car of the year had been like the Honda Accord for the previous 12 years or something in a row. <laughs> This is a huge thing. Edward Lowe was the new editor-in-chief, relatively new editor-in-chief. It was a big deal. It was an amazing, in my opinion, it was a still, honestly, great call to the magazine. Um, and I don't remember what year. I don't, I don't think it, it was a few years later, but uh, my brother-in-law, Mitch, kind of like, like the same mannerisms, vaguely. Um, just a really smart guy, smarter than you. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, guy, um, he bought a Model S, and it's an auxiliary car um, in his fleet. Uh, I think he enjoys it a lot. I think he finds what you have to say funny, public, what you've said publicly funny, I don't know, whatever. Um, but the thing is, he has added objectively so much more value to humanity than you have, than any of your ideas have, or will have. Please stop doing what you're doing. Please fucking stop what you're doing. Thank you. This has been a sober interview of Elon Musk by David Blue. What?